You like that, huh? Nice slide. Thanks. How much? Excuse me. How much for the car? Have you heard about that John Wick was originally a 75-year-old man before Keanu Reeves got the role? Before Reeves assumed the role. However, the original script of John Wick by screenwriter Derek Kolstad was about a significantly older man whose age did not stop him from beating the bad guys into pulp before starring in John Wick, which was released in 2014. Reeves appeared in a bunch of averagely received films, such as Generation Arm and 47 Ronin. Reeves was not exactly at a career high at the time, and his agent had inquired about the script for John Wick, which was handed to him with the note, Clearly, you're not 75. Reeves immediately saw the potential of the character, and forged an emotional connection with John Wick, who's, who's lost the love of his life and has this mythical dark past. Reeves loved the idea of a man on a quest to reclaim his life and while Kolstad was clear that Reeves could not play an elderly man, the actor's dedication to the role and deep understanding of John Wick's world eventually led to Kolstad changing this aspect of the character. I'll kill them. Oh, he has to die. Sorry, Jonathan. I said, don't see any other way. Well played, sir. Thank you all once again for the second time. Have you heard about that? The Point Break, 1991 was a reunion for Keanu Reeves and Patrick Swayze. They previously starred in the 1986 hockey drama Young Blood, featuring Reeves' first big screen appearance as the goofy goalie Heaver. His character in Point Break, 1991, was named John Utah. He has also appeared in three films whose title contains a U.S. state, The Prince of Pennsylvania, 1988, My Own Private Idaho, 1991, and Feeling Minnesota. 1996. <laughs> <laughs> Want the ultimate short trust tomorrow. Next day outside the latest. Everything moves in cycles. So twice a century, the ocean lets us know just how small we really are. Oh, oh, demons. Don't you, Johnny? You two have produced exactly squat. During which time, the ex-presidents have brought two more back. I can't describe what I feel. This was never about money for us. It was about us against the system. After you, Alphonse! <laughs> fear causes hesitation. Hesitation will cause your worst fears to come true. Whoa! Are you getting too goddamn close to the surfing dude buddy of yours? Adios, amigo! First tube this morning. I'm cursing. Have you heard about that Keanu Reeves comic book makes history? Keanu Reeves has made comic con history in San Diego. The actor is the creator and co-writer of the comic BRZRKR, which has become the first comic book to feature in the convention's prestigious Hall H, where first previews of new projects are featured. Although the hugely successful comic book series will come to an end in two more editions, Keanu told thousands of Comic Con fans it won't be the end of the story. Yeah, it started in my head. Right in there. Right in there. Violets. I'm cursed and compelled by it. It's the first comic book to be in Hall H. It was really oriented towards cinema previously and, and television. Um, so to be a part of that kind of history and also just to feel the audience and the appreciation um, and the passion for what we've been a part of creating, uh, really special. Like I'm on board, I've been doing comics 20 years. Uh, this is one of those things that comes by once in a lifetime. I'm like, oh, I think I think I should probably get on this. <laughs> and I thought it was just a branding thing, like, you know, Keanu Reeves Berserker, and he was just not really involved. And I pressed the Zoom meeting button at 1 o'clock, and there's this guy. <laughs> and that guy staring at me, sorry. <laughs> Hey, 
any storyteller wants their story to be told and wants their story, most importantly, to be heard. Um, and after that, hopefully appreciated. And so to be here today at Hall H to, to be seen, to be heard, and to be appreciated is the best that it can be. But what's that like? One day you put them away, next day you set them free. It takes a little getting used to. It pays better though. Have you heard about that Keanu Reeves has willingly taken pay cuts? Time after time, Reeves has proved himself dedicated to the craft. For Devil's Advocate, 1997, he deferred $2 million of his salary so they could afford to hook Al Pacino to the project. Pulling a similar move, Reeves cut the majority of his salary so that the replacements, 2000, could fist screen legend Gene Hackman into the budget. Money is the last thing I think about. I could live on what I've already made for the next few centuries. He told the Chicago Tribune. We're going to use replacement players, but they'll have something unique to bring to the game. We're going to take those people and try. What do you do here, John? You go for it, Pat. You have to. But Falco has been shut down by this defense all afternoon. All it takes is one big play to get him back in the ballgame. And here goes Falco. Falco scores! Sorry, I'm not. I'm just another guy. Have you heard about that Keanu Reeves didn't own a home until 2003? Reeves holds notoriety, and probably some sort of record, for not owning a home with his significant means until 2003. Close to 18 years after starting his career, he was essentially homeless and made trailers and hotel rooms his home. He was famously a long-time resident of the legendary Chateau Marmont Hotel in Los Angeles. In 2003, Reeves, finally, purchased a Hollywood mansion for $5.95 million and dubbed it his Chateau Modern. This is the Ducati that was in the Matrix Reloaded. Spectacular bike, beautiful motorcycle. Ducati did a special green, a kind of Matrix green, which makes it kind